This here will just be a quick video practicing if statements, if else statements, and if elif else statements. So we've got an if statement there, we've got an elif statement here, and an else statement here. Now this whole thing I would like to call this an if block. I don't know if that's its name, but I'd like to refer to it as an if block. To me, an if block is any composition of if, elif, and else that starts with if. An if block has to start with if and may or may not contain elif or else within the block. Elif and else cannot uh, function without an if statement preceding them, so uh, before them. So there needs to be an if statement before these two for them to actually be valid and work. Whereas the if statement can work on its own independent of these two. Okay, We can have any combination of if and an infinite number of elifs we don't need an else statement we can have one if statement and an else statement or we can have one if statement one elif statement and an else statement we can have an if statement several elifs and an else we cannot have more than one if in the same if block we can have several different if blocks but we can't have more than one if in the same if block each one starts a new if block we can have as many elifs as we want, but we can only have one else. So we can only have one if and one else in an if block, but as many elifs as we want. hope that clears up some confusion I might have given in the last video. So with this particular thing here, I want to make a function out of this, and I'm going to call it list append, which is short for list append. Um, we're going to take... Uh, we're going to take a, a number um, we're going to take a list we're going to take list 1 and list 2 yeah and I'm going to make a couple of lists so list uh, uno which means list 1 in Spanish and we'll just make it empty or oh, we'll, we'll put a few numbers in we'll put only ones in it for example list dos which means list two in spanish and it'll only have twos in it okay now in order for this to uh, actually work i need to first of all put these all here so i need to give them an indent because they're within a function, a def the defining of a function. Now, if n is more than, no, sorry, is equal to 1. By the way, I'm not sure if I introduced this yet, but equals equals is the computer's way of asking if the item on the left is equal to the item on the right. A singular equals is the computer's way of saying that the thing on the left is now equal to the value on the right. So for example, when I say list uno with one equal sign is this. I'm saying the variable list uno now has this value. Okay. When I'm saying n double equals, I am saying is n equal to 1, not saying that n is now equal to 1, if that makes sense. So if n is equal to 1, then list 1 dot append, not appned, <laughs> n. L if n is equal to 2, list 2 dot append n. Else print this number is neither 1 nor Two and cannot be appended to either list. 
Now, of course, we could append them, you know, with a different function. If we wanted to append them to a list, you can append any legitimate value to a list. But where, what, what we're saying with this print statement is that we, we don't want it to be appending to this list. So we've stopped it from being appended, it being appended to this list. So let's actually, you know, register all these values. Let's load them up. Make sure there's no problems here. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use this list append function. So list underscore append. And we'll have the number. We'll have the number be free just to test that the else statement will fire first of all. Uh, the first list, list uno. And the second list will be list dos. They're both of length five and they both have five items in them. And we'll just run this and see what happens. The number is neither one nor two and cannot be appended to either list. Very good. So we know that for three, this is work for two. It should be appended to list dos and list dos uh, should have six twos instead of five twos in it after we execute this. And let's have a look at list dos now. Count them one, two, three, four, five, six twos. Six twos there. Okay. So that shows us that that's worked. Just to make sure that it hasn't appended to list uno because we just don't know. We'll uh, look at the value of list uno and you can see that this has got six values in it whilst list uno only has five. Now for one, if we try this uh, function with just the number value one, the number one will have been appended to list uno and that should be containing six uh, ones now. It should be of length six and there we are. And if you look why that's happened, you'll see that's because one here, and n is equal to one, because that's n. That's our argument is n. And so we append it to list one. And in this case, list uno is list one. And to append to a list means to add to it. So we've added the n value here to list uno, which is list one here, because n in this case is one. So we ask the question, is n equal to 1? We're not saying n is, we're saying is n equal to 1? The answer is yes, and so this has happened due to the first if statement. Before that, we appended 2 to list dos. That was because in that case, n was equal to 2, and list 2 in that case was list dos, so we appended n to list dos. And in the other case, the number was neither 1 or 2 and couldn't be appended to either list. So because it wasn't either 1 or 2, it couldn't be appended to either list. But also because n was not equal to 2 and n was not equal to 1, the else statement fired. more In a more real sense, the else statement fired because neither of these two conditions were met. The if statement was not met and neither was the else if. And now I'll try and make an if with an else if. So if 1 is greater than 2, then anything, doesn't really matter, uh, print 1 greater than 2. Elif 7 greater than 5, print 7 is greater than 5. Elif eight greater than nine print eight greater than nine. Now if we run this, it should print that seven is greater than five. Now if you go through these uh, one by one, you'll see that obviously one is not greater than two, so this cannot fire. You'll see that 7 is greater than 5, so this must fire. Okay. Now, we'll edit that out before so that that doesn't fire, and we'll turn the print statement. And you'll see that nothing prints, because 8 is not larger than 9. So, there's no reason why any of this has to print. And because we don't have an else statement to catch any, of, any, any other 
thing that could happen, any other possible value or truth that could happen in the world, you know, and any other thing that's not any of these that happens. Because we don't have that else statement, nothing is printed, nothing actually happens. So we can only get output here if one of these conditions is met. So this shows that you don't need an else statement in your if block. However, without one, if any of your conditions aren't met, nothing will happen at all. All that will happen is the machine will look to try and meet these conditions. If they don't meet, none of them fire, and hence you get no output. Okay. Another thing I can show you quickly is an if statement. So if 7 is less than 4, or let's say less than 12 so that it executes. Print 7 less than 12. Okay, and a print 7 less than 12, but you see how there's nothing else here, there's nothing else here, yeah, absolutely nothing else. So basically, in these blocks, I'll explain, if any of these three criteria met, the whole block finishes, okay? Now... With this if statement, if I put another if statement here, that's also true, both these if statements will fire. Oops, that is not true at all. So I'll print 8 greater than 7. The reason this is, is because each if statement starts a new if block. So while this is a separate if block to this if block in here, or the if block used from the function here, this if block and this if block are also separate. Yeah, because they, they each if statement starts a new if block. So it's not like, you know, it's one if block with a bunch of ifs. No, if I want to make it so that these two are part of the same block rather than two separate if blocks consisting of only one if statement, I have to change the second one to L if. Yeah, the L if won't fire by the way here because 7 is less than 12, but if I change this to 25, for example, this will fire right now. Okay, and now if I change it again. And I change that back to 9. You'll see that they both fire. Because they are both part of separate if blocks. As it, as it is now. Next thing to show. Is that you can just use. Well pretty much as many ellipses as you want really. I mean. Uh, should I show that? Yeah. Yeah okay. So we'll say if. Um, 8 bigger than 9. Blah blah blah. Um, just print if fired. <laughs> LF eight bigger than twelve. First LF fired. Elif nine less than nine. Second Elif fired. Else else statement fired. This uh, is useful for a few things. It shows that we can use multiple elif in an if block and still use else. But it also gives us a way of monitoring which, which, which of our statements is fired. Because if the if fires, we'll get the message if statement fired. If uh, the, elif, the first elif is fired, we'll see first elif fired. We'll see second elif fired. So let's, for example, change 9 to 8 here. This should fire the second elif because this condition will now be true because 8 is less than 9. And of course, as soon as a true condition is met, it finishes the block. So the else 
doesn't get a chance to actually get set off. So watch this. Second elif fired. Let's imagine that I've got an if block consisting of maybe one, one, one if and say 15 elif statements and one else statement. Might be hard for me to keep track of which elif statement has actually uh, been fired, especially if you know the prints a generic statement. So this is a good way of tracking that. Anyway, this was just a little practice. I'll clarify things more um, by commenting this, and you can see that on my GitHub. The next video will probably talk about comparison. So when you see here, I said equals equals means that something is the computer asking if this is equal to that rather than telling the computer n is now equal to that. And also this bigger than and smaller than kind of stuff. It will be really handy if you guys could all have a list of operations, a list of comparisons of such. So I think in the next video, that's what I'll give you. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.